Today we're going to put two graphics cards up against each other. Yet this GPU battle is different from many others. Because these GPUs were part of a generation that has arguably shaped the GPU market for the last 10 years. On the red team we have the HD 3850 GPU and on the green team we have the NVIDIA GeForce GT 8800 GTS 512 megabytes version. Let's start with a bit of tech specs. If you don't want to listen to this and if you I don't I understand if you don't want to listen to it, you can just drag the slider along. I mean I would use an annotation but they got rid of those even though they're very useful. Um, you can just slide, drag the slider along until you hit some benchmarks. Right, let's get into some tech specs. For the NVIDIA GeForce 8800 GTS 512 megabyte version, we have of course 512 megabytes of GDDR3 VRAM running it on a 256 bit bus. We have 128 CUDA cores, uh, all based on the G92 variant of the Tesla microarchitecture. While the uh, 3850, on the other hand, is a bit more of a beefier card on paper, as 320 cores, same amount of VRAM on the same bus though, and it's based on the RV670 architecture. Based on the tech specs alone, you'd think that the uh, Radeon HD 3850 would wipe the floor of the 8800 GTS, but we all know that uh, the Radeon cores are a, a lot less powerful than the uh, Nvidia cores, and that remains true till today. The tech specs over. Let's uh, let's put these two beasts against each other and see how they stack up in 2019. Right. So uh, benchmark wise, we have two synthetic tests, which are Cinebench OpenGL, which although isn't very demanding, it's quite demanding for these old crap cards. We also have a uh, Unigen Heaven, which. Uh, Again, I don't really like using these boys, but um, we also have six games ranging from like really s some quite new stuff to uh, stuff from like the late 90s. So the uh, the first game we'll be doing is City Skylines. We have on the 800 side, we got 13 minimum, 67 at the best, and 44.8 most of the time. While the uh, City Skylines on the HD 3850 dropped a bit behind that, but with a uh, 28.2 minimum frame rate, a 68.8 maximum, a bit higher than the actual the uh, 8800 actually, and an average of 42.9. So we only got two frames in this one right now. Uh, next up, we have some uh, Counter Strike Global Offensive, which has become actually quite a lot more intensive since its latest updates. We've got on the 8800 side, we have 60 minimum. A maximum of 288.5 FPS and an average of 127 FPS. Very nice. But let's see how the uh, Radeon holds up. The Radeon fared quite badly in uh, Counter Strike with a minimum of 23.7, a maximum of 286, and an average of 65, almost half the average of the A800. Let's throw in an old game now. We have Call of Duty original version. We have 59.8. Minimum 60.2 maximum and 60 average on the 8800. And uh, with the uh, Radeon, we've got 60 minimum, 60 maximum, and 60 average, nice and smooth. Uh, so I think that the Radeon actually wins this round. However, Far Cry 3 brought it back into Nvidia's favour with a minimum of 47 FPS, a maximum of 81 and an average of 64.7 FPS, while the Radeon pulled a much worse 26 minimum, 39 maximum, and a measly 60, uh, 31 uh, average. GTA 5 repeats this trend, with uh, the Nvidia card actually pulling, again, almost twice the frame rate of the Radeon. Uh, the Nvidia card got 30.3 minimum, a maximum of 62.9, and an average of 44.4 FPS, while the Radeon only pulled 13 at the minimum, 37 at the maximum, and an average of just below that apparently playable 24 FPS, 22.7 FPS. So it's a bit like playing on the Xbox One, basically. Quake 3 Arena is the same across all cards. I don't even have any clips of this because it's too old to even record. It got 90 across the board on both cards, so uh, not much to talk about here. Now on some synthetic benchmarks, uh, as much as everyone hates them nowadays. In Cinebench OpenGL Test, the Nvidia card beat the Radeon infinitely better because it's it actually managed to run the test. It got 39.74 FPS, which is pretty pathetic compared to modern cards, but it certainly beat the Radeons didn't finish, as all it did was show a black screen for minutes on end as I tried to run the benchmark. And finally we have Unigen Heaven, 
with a minimum of 8.7, a maximum of 74, and an average of 48.5 FPS. The NVIDIA does not disappoint here, but neither does the Radeon. Even though it's a bit lower, the, uh, the minimum is a lot higher. A minimum of 22.2 shows that this Unigen Heaven is a lot more smooth on the Radeon. A maximum of 59.6 might not be as high as the uh, NVIDIA card, but it does show it to be a bit more consistent. The average of 34, however, does let it down a bit, as it shows that the Radeon is not really up to scratch in this one. So, in my opinion, these benchmarks do show why the uh, Radeon lost quite badly to NVIDIA's 8000 series of graphics cards, and shaped the modern GPU market the way it did, because although it had almost three times the CUDA cores as the NVIDIA GeForce, it lagged behind in most of the benchmarks, only providing a better minimum in both CSGO and in Unigine Heaven. Power and thermals were all the, leaning to the Radeon side, however. Even though it consumed a bit more power than the NVIDIA GeForce, it stayed noticeably cooler on the, uh, on the Radeon, only hitting like 50-odd degrees, while the NVIDIA GeForce often hit 90 degrees that refused to ramp its fan up and be loud. Still beats uh, Thermi though, because that thing, even though it kicks the fan up, it still hits 100 degrees. As for actually uh, buying any of these cards nowadays, I wouldn't recommend either of them as one GDDR3 VRAM is pitifully slow, as shown by that thing that Nvidia released recently, well not recently, six months ago, the uh, GT1034 GDDR4 edition was awful. But um, yeah, bad VRAM. Lil VRAM, only 512 uh, megs, most games will throw up an error at that, and GTA 5 was warning us that even running at 800 by 600 we were exceeding VRAM. And although cheap, they're still about like 20 quid each, I mean, the GeForce, they did pick up at 12 quid at CX, but um, there's a lot better buys, for example, for just 100 pounds you can get an RX 570, which is a much better card, and uh, on the same on the Nvidia side, the ten the ten sixty is a great card, and same as the nine seventy. And since this mining crash happened, these cards are just flooding the market, and you might as well just get one of those over an ancient piece of shit like this. And uh, yeah, that's at the end of this today's video. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. It helps quite a lot here. If you want to join our Discord server, it's hella dead, but go ahead. And uh, hopefully we'll see you next time.